Hello and welcome to the show. Now, something that's always close to my heart is the development of media in South Africa and around the world. Rashad Mohammed is here and he's the MD of Tabloid Media and he's launching a new paper coming up shortly. So we're going to talk a bit about that. Rashad, welcome to the program. Thank you, Phil. Now, before we talk about this very exciting publication you've got coming up, uh, I know you, at this stage you, you're looking very excited. I saw you before the show on the phone and that sort of thing. So it's all sounding very exciting. But for us to understand your publication, your new one, I would like to understand you as a person, uh, your role in media, especially in the KZN in the region, and then look at your new publication. Rashad Mohammed, who are you? Well, I'm the publisher at Tableau Newspapers. Um, we have 14 titles that we publish. They're free titles. The one we're launching now will be the first sole title after 24 years. I originally after started, 24 years? I originally started off with a sole title um, and uh, unfortunately had to, to shut it down because as a one-man show, I, I couldn't handle more than one paper at a time. And I'm now going back to my roots. Um, to go back to that sole title that I still feel has potential to grow. Now, Tabloid Media, uh, as an organization and company, I know that you've been there now for many years, but where did all that start? Um, quite by accident, actually. Um, I started off as a photographer, and I worked mainly in the fashion industry, the modeling industry. I worked very closely with newspapers, because many of them required pictures of models, uh, the then Sunday Times were very famous for that page three model on page one. And uh, often I was asked to either supply the model or the picture. And having worked with newspapers, I found that my passions were changing from just being a photographer with models to being a photographer working with newspapers. And uh, being the ambitious individual that I am, I preferred to be the boss, hence the reason why I chose to rather launch my own newspapers than work for one. Now, going forward, you uh, do you feel that transition from going from photographer into the actual journalistic area of a newspaper? Uh, do you think that a part of you at that time was calling for you to play a role in change and benefit other people's lives by being able to inform them about things happening around the world? Absolutely. Faisal, um, much of what I do and how I got to where I am was based on the passion I had for what I do. I, I didn't see myself as working or doing a job. For me, it was very passion driven. I enjoyed what I did. And I think that to me is, if one had to ask what was my secret to success, that would be the secret, is that you don't do something because you have to or you want to, you do something because you enjoy doing it. And that has basically led me from photography, which is still my first love, to adapting what I do into newspapers. And I found that um, newspapers started to, to challenge me a lot more. Um, and I enjoyed it even more uh, being able to see those papers come off the press, knowing that I had something to do with that. And that was more exciting for me than any money that I could have made out of it. Um, and I enjoyed that and I still enjoy it now. I mean, as we speak, my, my new title is currently printing. They've just sent me a picture of it and, and I can't tell you how proud I am to know that, that, that I've now fulfilled that dream after 24 years of launching a paid title. Now, if you're looking at uh, situations like, for example, um, throughout society today we have various issues happening in the media which are negative stories and we hear them every day. It's the rape, it's the crime, it's the corruption, the fraud. So those are stories that South Africans have become accustomed to. Do you ever find a day that you covered a positive story perhaps, maybe a kid that needed some funding and it actually happens because of your newspaper and you sit there looking at that and saying, um, for some reason I'm doing my job but I played a role in this. Uh, do you have those days and, and do you feel that those days make you feel what you're doing is, is what you are happy doing? Very often actually. Um, you know, as, as community newspapers, we, we see ourselves as the champions of the community. Um, often called upon to help raise funds, called upon to, to highlight some of the problems that the community is having and where the municipality 
uh, are not assisting or helping. But, but getting involved, we find that it soon solves the, the problem itself. You know, Raising funds for people that need wheelchairs, people that have got um, serious illnesses that can only be solved through certain uh, uh, surgery or treatment overseas, We've played a part in that, raising funds. We, we, we prefer doing things like that because we feel we're helping the community. And that's really where, where we stand from a community point of view. Great. So, so in your job, you obviously find that positiveness at the same time. And sometimes highlighting the negative uh, leads to positive at the same time. Absolutely. Now, you've got this new publication coming up and you're saying after all these years, it's finally happening. Mm -hmm. And that's the paid publication. Uh, the brand itself, tell us a bit about that. We haven't mentioned the, the title yet, no, so I'm leaving that for you. We, we can. The, the title is Was Our Weekend. Um, you know, it's a universal word, a, a universal saying amongst people in, in, in South Africa, more so in KZN. Meaning? Ba basically, Was is come on, come on weekend. Right. You know, we, it's here. You know, um, Zulu, as you know, the, the one word can mean many things. The etymology of the word is, is found, has found its origins way in which uh, which sector of the African languages are taken? Zulu. 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 Right. Um, but uh, people who are not, not from the Zulu background often use it as well. And so it's I, a South African term. Yeah, it's become a South African term. And when, we, when, we, when I sat down to choose a name, I, I wanted a name that was South African. I wanted a name that, that, that people could identify with, a name that, that would not alienate any one race group. So although initially when you hear the word Waza, you immediately think Zulu, black. But no, in South Africa, especially in KZN, um, Indians, whites, coloreds, they know the word, they use the word. And especially when they use it with weekend, it's, it's, it's like it's an excitement for them. Was our weekend, it's here. It means, uh, you know, it's time to, to put the work away, it's time to chill, time to relax. And hence the name, you know, Was our weekend. So, okay, so that's the inspiration behind the paper. Tell us a bit about the distribution. Um, you're saying weekends, so obviously I take it this is a weekend publication only. Uh, well, basically it's a publication that will, will be published on a Friday um, and it lasts through the weekend. Uh, the idea behind was a weekend was to provide people with a, a, how should we say, a paper that doesn't just highlight what every other paper has been highlighting, the bad, the bad news, the negatives, the murders, the rapes. We'll have information like that, but we will not highlight it. So you won't find it screaming out at you. The, the, the main text of Was Our Weekend will be a relaxed feel, entertaining, infotaining, um, providing people with information that's, that's more to, to have you relax more than have you get excited about what's happening in your community. So there's this component of lifestyle that's happening in that. Absolutely. Uh, I commented to someone yesterday, someone asked me what's happening in the news today, because I, I sort of sit with the news early in the morning. Uh, for television, and um, I said that nothing different is happening. The only thing that happens in the news is that we're going to talk about rape, we're going to talk about corruption, fraud, and theft, and murder. The only thing that happens is that we just change the names. Absolutely. Uh, that's all that's happening. So I love the idea that you are showing that there's a positiveness to, to society. I think that if papers like yourself and media like yourself must for one day not report anything negative. And this is an idea. And let's talk about all the positive issues for one day. Our suicide rate might just drop for that day. <laughs> because we, we influence the way people feel. We In the morning, we feed them with all these things. Yeah, By the end of the day, they're like, oh, God, absolutely. we're going down the drain. You know? well, what we publish definitely affects the community and the minds of the community and how they perceive the future here in this country. So unfortunately, um, when you look at mainstream publications, they're going to look at what sells. And um, whether we like to accept it or not, hard news does sell. Bad news does sell. Sensationalism does sell. So they, they need to pick those figures up. Um, and hence why um, you'd find that there's a lot of bad news in paid newspapers. Yes, we live in a country where corruption is rife. Bad news is, is every day. You know, people have hijacks, robberies, people are dying. So we, we, we'll be failing in our duty as newspapers not to publish it. Um, so we have to publish it. But yes, we also look for the positive spin-offs. We try to keep our front pages positive and not negative all the time. And that's where Was I Weekend is going to be very different. So as much as you, you'd be able to pick up a copy, read it and know what's happening in your country, whether positive or negative, okay, you, you'll still be able to get more highlights of the positive in your city and around you than the negatives in Waza Weekend. 
we believe that if you don't buy a newspaper from Monday to Friday and you just buy Wazo Weekend, it will be enough to tell you what's been happening that you've missed in by not buying those papers and at the same time prepare you for the weekend where you can relax and enjoy uh, going out or doing whatever it is, whether it's good food or entertainment, the movies, whatever it may be. Great. Are there any defining characteristics of this new publication uh, that might stand out from different publications? Something innovative, something different uh, that, that, that's above what newspapers normally do? Well, firstly, the size. We what I'm actually asking is, give me a reason to buy was a Weekend, this weekend. I'll give you a reason to buy it. Um, firstly, the size of the paper. We've chosen to go with what we call a short tabloid. It's slightly shorter than the normal tabloid. Makes it more manageable to hold. It, it makes it stand out from the rest of the publications. Okay, um, the first seven pages of, of, of uh, first eight pages of Waza has absolutely no ads, whatsoever. So you're buying a publication where the first eight pages is pure editorial. Um, we've designed the paper to to have a column that runs on the one side of each page that will highlight all the news, be it hard, uh, be it corruption, rape. But in such a small section that if you choose to read was I not want to read the bad news, you could just isolate it because it's not going to be screaming out at you. The bulk of the paper, if one has to call it six columns out of eight, is purely good news, um, positive news, entertaining news, news that's going to put a smile on your face, news that's going to basically want you to look forward to your weekend. Um, that to me is, was, was paramount when we designed this publication. Um, in so far as why go and buy the paper? Well, aside from the competitions, you're going to win lots of prizes. Um, we're also going to get information that you wouldn't normally get in mainstream. You know, information as it happens. We've signed up with international news agencies to provide us with information 24-7 so that when we publish on a Friday, you're getting the news fresh from wherever it's happening and where it's happened. Um, you'll be able to read it immediately when you get a copy and, and be informed of what's happening in your community. Should I tell us about the distribution on this one? Um, I know that your distribution plan might change as you go along and develop the paper, which I'm sure you have plans of. But the distribution in the initial stages, where do South Africans find them for now? Well, for now, we, 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 we're regional in KZN. Um, we'll be available throughout KZN through the usual news, newspaper network via a, a national distributor. Um, we're planning to do national. At, at this stage, we want to take baby steps. I've always believed in let's get the product out there. Let's fix what needs to be fixed so that it looks better than what it is now. It looks great now, but I'm saying, you know, I'm always open to room uh, for, for, for improvement. Um, but once we've established it in KZN, and once the numbers are up there, people are enjoying what they're reading, we'll certainly look at, at taking it to, to other parts of the country. In terms of columns, uh, are there any set columns uh, that might be of a lifestyle nature, for example, health and that sort of thing? Yeah. We, we basically have a travel, motoring, health and beauty, um, good food, in other words, a dining experience. And that's quite a big one. I mean, a lot of people go in for that one. Absolutely. We all have to eat. And I think mm. we, we all become very discerning as to when, where do we eat or what do we eat. So we've, we've created an entire page on it. We've got an entire page on fashion, for example. Um, so people can basically see what the latest fashion are out there. So, like I said, it's an infotaining publication. So basically, you, you're going to get informed, you're going to get entertained. Um, there's pages dedicated to technology, for example. Um, we've got uh, a Sudoku, we've got crossword puzzles, cartoons. We've tried to cater for every member of the family. So whether you are 18 or younger or you're 45, there's something in Waza Weekend that you will find captivating enough to make you want to go out and buy the paper every Friday. So you looked at the demographic that is across the ages, across the genders, and across uh, the demographic planning with regards to LSMs and stuff like that. Correct. So it's a paper for everybody. It's a paper for everybody. We've kept the price low, uh, more or less half the price of the daily paper in KZN. We've, we were going in at 3 Rand 50, which is very affordable. Um, our minimum pagination is 24. The first edition was 32, which was quite exciting. Uh, our advertisers... Um, so 24 and 32 pages? Well, 24 was, is, our, is our minimum. Right. Okay, but the first edition went 32, which, which wasn't expected. Yes. You know, we, but 32 we, pages for 350, that, that's quite a bit of value in that. That's brilliant, brilliant. And, and the advertising is 20% 20, 20 of it. So you're still getting almost 80% of editorial for that price.
I think uh, we get that question a lot, but I think viewers on TV and readers of newspapers need to understand the fact that part of that paper, the fact that you could buy that at three and fifty, it means it needed to be subsidized by advertisers at the same time because Absolutely. the cost is enormous. Absolutely. That's one of the biggest problems with newspapers today is they don't plan for those costs, especially paid newspapers. Publishers tend to, to have this dream, I want to own a, a publication, um, which is easy to do, but to sustain it, that's where the problem comes in. Hence why it's taken me so long to go back there. Um, I'd reached a saturation point as far as the free newspapers are concerned, which are, are performing quite well. And to be honest, I get bored very quickly. So I, I saw this opportunity and about two years or three years ago, I started planning it, waiting to put the right team behind it. I realized that when you run a company like Tabloid Media, you, 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 it needs your time. And you can't be hands-on on everything that you do. Yes, you can develop the business, you can plan, but somebody needs to drive it. And hence why I waited till we put a team together to drive it so I know that it's going to sustain itself. I don't have to get involved. I can look at other opportunities. I can look at developing the business further and the paper can now literally run itself. Now we have advertisers, potential advertisers perhaps watching the program. Uh, why would you want to make a call on them to come on board? Uh, what, what would be great for them? Apart from the great content, uh, what's the standout factor for advertisers to come on board on this particular publication? Well, for one, we, we've kept the prices very, very low from an advertising perspective, for at least for the first month. I, I think that's key. Yeah. Um, we, we want people to see value. We want people to invest in Waza Weekend, hence the reason why we've kept the prices low. We're saying that if you see the vision that we're trying to create and you're willing to put money behind it in the form of advertising, we'll reward you with a big discount. And if you're part of the anchor group that come on board initially, that prices will be kept for you. And obviously, it will increase very slightly. Once the paper's established, once the paper's circulation is up there, prices are going to go up for anybody new that's coming in. So advertisers getting in at the, at the initial stages are obviously going to save money. It's like, it's like any investment you do today. If you do it now because you believe it can grow, you save money because you're going in at far less than what you would normally pay if it was an established pro pro product. And I think advertisers can bench their judgment on the fact that uh, this is not your first publication. You're doing that for many years. So I think that security is the end in terms Absolutely. of the success of Absolutely. the product eventually. Rashad, I want to take your attention to this global phenomenon of media convergence. Uh, we see that today, the same story. Uh, we cover the story on TV. Uh, you cover the story in the paper. And there are some media outlets that maybe have convergence models where they would take that online onto apps and all that kind of thing. With that all happening and the world becoming more technological than it's, that it's supposed to be, in my view, uh, where do you see yourself going with regards to publications like this in the future with regards to technology? Okay, you're talking about e-papers, digital, yes, perhaps, digital yes. platforms. Okay, we, we were one of the first groups to go the digital route about eight or nine years ago um, when it was becoming commonplace in, in places like the US and in, and in the UK where newspapers were literally shutting down, printing presses were grinding to a halt because people were now viewing these newspapers online. We chose to do it. We chose to do it not necessarily because we wanted a digital presence. We wanted to have an archival presence so that our papers could be digitized and available for years to come in the future. It didn't add any value to our bottom line, unfortunately, because being a free newspaper, people are getting it free anyway. Great. But we wanted to still make ourselves available on the digital platform. And build that brand further. Absolutely. So we still have it. Our website is, is uh, up and running, updated 24-7 with the latest news that our titles carry. Each of our titles are available as an online uh, publication that you could easily download or, or view page by page. So we've already got that presence. Um, even with the new title, I mean, website's up and running, Facebook's up and running. Um, we've got all of that already in place. And yes, we will probably look at, at uh, establishing an application um, to run uh, the sole title. So people will be able to access it online. Um, it, it is the way to go for the future. I don't believe um, that newspapers in South Africa are going to grind to a halt anytime soon. But yes, I think more and more people are starting to prefer going the digital route. There are those that prefer to have the feel of a newspaper in their hands, and I'm hoping that never changes. But we're certainly prepared for that new digital age. Um, we've been doing it for so many years now that, you know, it's a, it's a case of when, when, it, when it's going to happen fully onto digital, we're ready for it. I've seen a bit of a circle on that matter. 
from the point of view that I'm one of those people, I'm, I'm very technological, so I like my iPads and iPhones and all those of the latest things that come out, I need to be there. But something funny happens in that model, and I think it's a, it's a great space to talk about this. I went from normal newspapers, and then I go on to all the online ones, I've got the app, so I, I watch and I read all the newspapers on the apps and that sort of thing. And I developed a good level of insomnia and all those kind of things as a result of these apps. So yes, it's got its positives and its negatives. I then spoke to a couple of friends of mine, they are occupational specialists, they are medical specialists, and they've explained to me that you should not read your newspaper or your books on your iPad anymore because it's contributing to the fact that you cannot sleep because that screen lit up in front of you is keeping you awake, telling your brain that it's blue light coming into your brain and it means it's daytime. Mm. Eventually what happens is you end up sleeping very badly. And so for those that normally read at night the newspaper or books, the best way is to still go back to printed paper. And, that, and that's sound medical advice coming from some specialist friends of mine. So I think the space is always going to be the big, I think we're doing a curve. And that is, we want to jump on these apps, but eventually we're going to realize it's actually not good for us. Yeah. Well, look, if, if you look at uh, phones for that matter, I mean, phones should be banned from the bedroom in my opinion, because you generally spend, you spend more time on the phones than actually spending time with your spouses. Um, and I think people have proven that, that that sort of leads to lots of issues, marital problems, etc. So, yes, I think, you know, um, newspapers definitely still have a place uh, in the community. I, I hope and, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm glad to say that to a large extent um, that we've seen people prefer to receive their paper every week rather than go online to read it. Uh, although we have the digital platform, we find that people still prefer the real thing. So hopefully that continues. What role does tabloid media and the new publication, or what role does the new publication plan to play with regards to developing more journalists and taking our community uh, as a South African community that um, is heading into various, uh, I think in the past they weren't too much into media. Nowadays we find the youth is very interested in all these media platforms. What role can you play or are you playing at the moment to develop that talent a bit further? Well, we work very closely with the journalist universities, um, DUT and, and others, and um, we provide in-service training to these uh, journalist students who come in either for two months or six months where they get in-house training, newsroom training. So we do play a part in it. Um, we believe that, that good journalism can only come from experience. Uh, I personally believe that these schools or colleges that do teach journalists um, don't exactly do the best of jobs, I must be honest, because when we get them, we have to really do more with them than they've already learned in theory, because some of them can't even put words together. And I often have to ask this question of potential journalists of why did you become a journalist or why do you want to become a journalist? And I, I promise you I get some really crazy answers. I mean, one in particular that comes to mind is a young lady who, who was very keen to continue doing journalism, but you could see that, that it was not her passion. So I asked her the one day in the newsroom, I said, look, you're here, you're doing your in-service training, but I have to ask you this question because I can see this is not something you're passionate about. Why did you do journalism? And, and her answer was amazing. She says, no, my mother told me to do it. Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting. And, and <laughs> you won't believe what she's doing now. She's yeah. no longer doing journalism. She's doing catering. Because that's where her passion was. Her passion was food. Her passion was, was getting involved in the food industry. And that's what she's doing. And that's why I say to people all the time, follow your passion. You know, if you want to know what to do, what are you passionate about? When you discover that and you follow that, that's where success lies. Success does not lie in following the money. Because eventually it's all going to be about the money. So your service won't be there anymore. You won't deliver on, on promises anymore. Because all you're worried about is the money. But if you enjoy what you're doing, you'll never have to work a day in your life. I totally yeah. agree with you. I, I do a program with Riyad Musa, the comedian and medical doctor, and we have this discussion all the time because I said, you know, many people struggle to get into medical school. Mm -hmm. You go and qualify and uh, you are busy doing your comedy shows and you're saying, I don't feel like practicing right now kind of mm -hmm. thing. So I find that a bit strange. I'm not saying that he uh, personally wouldn't go back into it. He did indicate your will. But I'm saying it's about doing what you want to do. Absolutely. And the one thing, now that you're saying that, I can see you doing what you want to do and therefore the success of tablet media. 
Uh, Rashad, we wish you well with the new publication. We're going to try and catch up with you now and then to see how it's going down the line. And from a Dean TV point of view and from my show, The Faisal Say Show, we totally support what you do and we wish you well. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. Thanks. Rashad Mohammed, the MD of Tabloid Media, launches his new paper shortly. Watch out for that, especially in KZN and online. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Goodbye.